What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Cherry OS version 3.6.5. This is the official build based on Android 12 L. And yes, I have made a previous video on this ROM, but before I start the video, let me just talk about the device a little bit because I have used my Redmi Note 7 Pro for about more than three years now. And finally, the battery was almost dead and the device was not starting up at all. So I flashed MIUI and afterwards it was even like failing to go after the boot logo or the Redmi logo. So after that, I definitely have to change the battery. But of course, the battery I have replaced it with is not original. This is kind of a duplicate product, you may say, but this almost costs about 800, 900 rupees. So if your battery is draining on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, I can definitely suggest using this one. It has three months warranty, it says over here. Also, it has the battery temperature sensor and stuff. If you're wondering about those, I'll show you those. So yeah, this BN4A battery by AI Power is pretty good or pretty decent for 800 to 900 rupees. You can get it in local shops. Of course, I'll talk about the battery life in this video. So do watch it till the end. And talking about the build again, this is the 24th April 2022 build over here. And the Cherry OS is one of the best ROMs that I have seen as of right now for the Redmi Note 7 Pro at least. In the about section, this is how it looks like. We have the Cherry OS logo up top, pretty big. It looks beautiful. We have this about phone section, like in pretty bold font, I would say. The Android version, you can see it's Android 12 L and we have the Cherry OS version as 3.6.5. The maintenance are Karthik and Madhav, so huge thanks to them for this amazing ROM again. And we have the latest security patch of April 5th, 2022. The stock kernel is the Litten GD kernel and the Linux status shows as enforcing. Here is the build date again 23rd April 2022. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. We have the thermal profiles and stuff. If you want to see a profile, as you're noticing, we have this default benchmark browser, camera dialer, etc. So you can have these like profiles to your benchmark apps, just like I have changed it to like for the end to light. This is great that we get the thermal profiles again. We have the gestures here. We have the quick tap that is the back tap over here. You can have it for the screenshot or to access assistant and stuff like that. We have the quickly open camera, so you can double press the power button for the camera. And we have the system navigation gestures and in the settings, we have the pill length customization. But then again, there is no like thickness customization for the pill bar. But we have more things like the advanced gesture and stuff. So extended swipe action you get. And we have the back gesture animation, the full screen gestures. Also the IME button space, you can hide that if you want to. Also the swipe to invoke assistant is working perfectly fine. And once I do that, it gives you a haptic feedback. And as you can see, the Google Assistant is popping out super fine. No issues whatsoever. The two button, three button navigations are working perfectly fine. No issues. And the swipe direct screenshot and stuff, they are working perfectly fine. We have the Google Lens, then the delete, edit and share option. Also, we do have the prevent ringing option and the one handed mode is working perfectly fine here. Also, if you have connected a Bluetooth headset, if you're noticing on the status bar, there is that Bluetooth battery icon. And if you want to see in the quick setting panel too, that do appear as you can see. Now let's talk about the home screen a little bit. This is the home screen and we get the pixel launcher by default. You can disable the suggestions if you want to. And here, the good thing is in this pixel launcher itself, you do get a double tap to sleep. So yeah, it is, I think a kind of modified pixel launcher, but yes, this is great that we do have this double tap to lock anywhere in the home screen. And as you can see, double tapping to wake is working perfectly fine. And if I show you the thing with scanner speed, it's awesome. Let me actually enable the always on display. And right now, if I double tap over here, as you can see, it locks the display. And if I tap the finger bit scanner, and as you can see, it unlocks. Just notice the unlocking speed. And let me just do it one more time, as you can see. And you can also do the like power button lock. And if you do that, this is the animation that appears. Looks beautiful. So I'm tapping the finger bit scanner right now. And as you can see, it has unlocked. Unlocking speed with the finger bit scanner is blazing fast. No issues whatsoever that you will face. Also to the left side of the home screen, we do get the Google's Discover page and we have the quick setting panel just like this, swiping down, you can get the quick setting panel. And this is good that in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays white. This is what I like. But the accent color, if you're wondering why it's just gray, that's because the wallpaper is kind of like this. And this is why the accent color has turned out to be gray. But otherwise, if you change the wallpaper, the accent color should change. Let me actually do that quickly. So in the wallpaper and styles, this is how it looks like. We have the wallpaper colors and the basic colors too. We have the dark theme and the themed icons and the upgrade. You can get up to six by nine. That's kind of funny, but yeah, you do have these options. In the change wallpaper section, let me actually, so let's just go with this one, home screen and lock screen. I'll just apply that quickly. 
and as you can see it has been applied and right now as you are noticing the accent color has changed so yeah the accent colors are working perfectly fine also in the app drawer this is how it looks like and whenever you swipe up just like this you get a haptic feedback feels awesome and here as you can see the app drawer is pretty smooth and you can search for any particular app that you want to search as you are noticing the like app drawer searching and stuff they should be working perfectly fine here also the widgets in the home screen are working great and if you are noticing the animations of the android 12 clock widget or android 12 l clock widget as you can see the animations are working super fine also if you are wondering about the quick setting panel toggles let me actually show you those you can edit and add them from right here and there are plethora of quick toggles that you can edit and add so let me show you the ones that i have added as usual we have the wi-fi the mobile data and stuff and of course if you insert a vaulty capable sim the vaulty should be working fine the bluetooth audio and stuff everything is great over here the dark theme and stuff is there the night light hotspot etc the always on display toggle you do get we have the volume panel just like this let me show you from here if you tap on the device just notice the animations how beautiful it looks whenever you tap on this if you're noticing you can change the phone speaker or something you can control the volume of your bluetooth device from right here or you can change the output method from right here also we have the expansion option of the volume panel just like this and once you do this you get a little bit of haptic feedback over here and let me show you we have the nearby share the screen recorder is also there and if you're noticing the animations just looks dope we have the battery saver right here the do not disturb and stuff and the google home controls you do get over here too also the reboot toggle is there you can directly reboot to the recovery if you just tap and hold on that and we have the fps counter right here so if you want to enable that let me actually show you if you're noticing the fps appears right over there and yes the fps counter is working perfectly fine here and this is how the power menu looks like and it appears very beautifully if you tap on advanced you can definitely reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here now let me jump into the settings and this is how the settings panel looks like and again you can see the tint of the background over here depending on the accent color in the cherry settings you get all the customizations and it has plethora of customizations and stuff so i would just suggest if you want to see the customization just head on to the previous video that i made about the cherry OS. but yes from the power menu and stuff and from the notification panel customizations then from the misc settings and stuff you can see i'm just giving you an overview over here of each settings but then again there are huge amount of customizations over here in this room in terms of themes and stuff we have the total pitch black option over here the monet engine and stuff you can customize plethora of fonts are there and in the quick setting panel too there are huge customizations and even in the status bar we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar the vaulty icons changing option the battery icons if you're wondering about those these are the battery icons that you will get also we have the battery percentage and stuff changing option so yes huge amount of customizations you do get over here still and in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness and stuff let me scroll down we have the small dpi or width kind of thing and we have the night light option you can control the intensity the double tap to wake and the wake up on plug both are there they should be working perfectly fine and we have the notification settings and this is how the notification settings looks like also in terms of the sound settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume control we have the left volume panel too and here we get the volume panel timeout too that's just awesome and we have the other ringtone pattern changing option and stuff attach vibration you can actually change from right here or disable and you have the per app volume control the me sound enhancer you do get and of course you can enable it and the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well should be awesome with this one and we get all these presets let me go back we have the clear speaker option too if you want to clear your speaker if it had some dust also let's talk about the battery this is how the battery settings looks like we have the battery temperature right here on the bottom but i would have loved to see the battery charging cycle and stuff but yes you do get the battery temperature so with this i can definitely figure out that my battery temperature sensor is actually working in this duplicate battery too we have the use pixel battery stats provider option so if you go into the battery usage you can see the other things that you have used and we have the battery saver right here and it will automatically turn on if you just schedule it from right here and we have the adaptive preference and stuff now i have used this aku battery app over here to actually monitor the stats of the battery and with that just notice the battery life over here i have got about 8 hours and 17 minutes over here it shows so you can definitely get more than 8 hours of screen on time on this so that's just huge in my frank opinion and if you're noticing the standby drain is quite a lot less 
when compared to other ROMs here. So yes, definitely changing the battery was worth it for me. And on top of that, the Cherry OS is just even more optimized as of right now. If you want to get amazing battery life out of your Redmi Note 7 Pro, I would just suggest if your battery health is too low, just replace it with an original one or a duplicate one depending on your budget. In the health settings, this is how my battery health appears. If you are noticing, I have about 97% health as of right now. So yeah, I replaced it three days ago. So that's why if you're noticing, I've got about 3,888 almost like estimated capacity. So that's pretty great for a like not original battery, I would say. So in terms of battery life, I have been totally liking this particular ROM. Of course, after replacing the battery. Now here we get the ANX camera right out of the box. And that's just a pro for this particular ROM. In my opinion, this is one of the best features of Cherry OS and I definitely like it. And here we have the 48 megapixel working perfectly fine. I have tested it thoroughly. Let me just give you a demo. So I just captured this photo and you can see this is a 48 megapixel photo right here. So yeah, I would say this actually gives huge amount of details inside this, like in terms of the 48 megapixel photo clarity. It's just awesome. You can see the dial of the Zoom H1n, how much details it has preserved. Also in terms of the portrait selfie and stuff, if you're noticing the portrait selfie should be working great over here. But for video, you get up to 4K 30fps option and of course there is the 1080p 60fps option for the rear camera. And if you switch to the front camera, you get up to 1080p 30fps option. And if you go into the pro mode, you only get a photo kind of clicking option. There is no pro video option over here on this Redmi Note 7 Pro. So again, the ANX camera is one of the best things that you will get on this Cherry's OS. So right now, let me actually set up the face unlock and show you the face unlocking speed. And for the face unlock settings, you can actually customize that to when swiping up on the lock screen. And let me show you from right here. If I double tap to wake and then swipe up, as you can see, it unlocks very fast and snappy unlocking experience with the face unlock as well. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with the face unlock either. Also, there is app lock and you can customize that of course, but yes, this is how the app locking UI looks like. Whenever you lock a particular app, this is how it will look. And once you tap the frame scanner, as you can see, it just unlocks and it works 100% of the time. Now, if you want to know about the basic things like the DRM info and stuff, as you are noticing, in terms of the DRM info, you do get L1 over here and you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues here. Also, the safety net should pass here right out of the box. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM, you can check out the description or the cards. And yes, banking app should be working perfectly fine here out of the box. Also, let me talk about the IR Bluster a little bit with this particular app. And here, if you are noticing, the IR Bluster is actually working perfectly fine here. No issues whatsoever with the IR Bluster on this particular ROM. Also, in terms of performance and stuff, I have seen it's working perfectly fine. Also, there is a split top mode, so you can switch the apps of Android 12. This is an amazing feature of Android 12, actually. And in the recent panel, the app stays together like this. And you can, of course, scale them just like this. So, yeah, split top is amazing feature. And on, in terms of performance overall, the like Cherry OS has been holding up really, really well. Here are the N22 and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I have been definitely enjoying this Cherry OS on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me in the comments what do you guys think about it. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.